So let's take a look at the SI system. Uh, we're going to learn about some units and some conversions in this systems of, system of measurements. Uh, for starters, the SI system, the name, stands for a French phrase, which is Système International d'Unité, uh, which literally means the International System of Units. Um, it's more commonly known as the metric system. The metric system is a, is a very old name that was used to describe this back a uh, long time ago, as late as, as early as the 40s and 50s, as countries were switching over uh, from whatever units they were using beforehand. It is a true system, uh, unlike the units we have in this country today. And the reason it is, is because all units in the SI system are related by powers of 10. We don't have that in our current um, units that we use. What we use are, are called imperial units. And the imperial units are very old, and they're not really a real system. The units aren't re really related in any intuitive way. Uh, for example, there are 12 inches in a foot. There are 3 feet in a yard, or 5,280 feet in a mile. Um, there's no real relationship between uh, volume ounces and weight ounces. There's two words, ounce, but they mean completely different things if we're using uh, them for weight or for, for volume. Um, 16 ounces in a pound, and then 2,000 pounds in a ton. It, there's really no, no sense to it all. Um, so it's not really a system. Uh, back in the 1970s, President Jimmy Carter at the time tried to get the United States to switch over from imperial units to the metric system and uh, it was a fairly uh, involved effort. Um, back when I was uh, fairly young there were TV commercials. As a matter of fact, here's one now. Take 10 America to learn the metric way It's a simple system based on tens that you can start today Efficient, more accurate, more universal too It's good for our economy, our country and for this meter, the meter, it's a little more than a yard. You think about it that way, it's really not so hard. The leader, the leader, now please don't sell it short. It works out fine, if you keep in mind, it's a little more than a quart. The gram, the gram, about the weight of a single raisin. About the same as a paper clip, now isn't that amazing? Celsius, Celsius, temperature scale, you see. Summer day's about 25, a cold day's minus 3. Take 10 minutes to learn the metric way. Write Metric Education, P.O. Box 111, Washington, D.C., 20044. Take 10! This message has been brought to you as a public service by this station and the U.S. Office of Education. In commerce, when you go buy something, the best we can do nowadays is dual labeling. So you know that you can find sometimes the metric equivalent on a packaging uh, as well as the imperial units on there. Um, 12 ounces, 12 ounce can is 355 milliliters of soda. Okay, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but there's some confusion here, especially when uh, when people from this country travel to like the EU, for example, or Great Britain or any of those places where they're using the SI system, there can be a lot of confusion in figuring out what are they actually telling me. One of the most common ones is in temperature. Um, if they tell you it's 25 degrees outside, in this country, we know that we need to bundle up. Well, actually, no, we're from Wisconsin, so we'd probably just wear maybe a light sweater. But if they say 25 degrees in the EU, well, that's pretty hot. That's a warm enough day. You could probably wear shorts and a T-shirt. So there is a lot of confusion um, when we travel and when we try to justify one for the, one for the other. So there are co some common SI units that you should be aware of. We've used some of them already. Actually, we've used all of them already. We just want to become familiar with them. So for mass, the standard SI unit is the gram. It's represent represented by a little g. For volume, it's the cubic meter or the liter. Now, you haven't used either of those yet because we've been using smaller volumes. A cubic meter would be a cube, one meter on a side. That's big. That's a lot of volume. Um, but a cubic meter and a liter, those aren't, those aren't equivalent measurements. We've been using things like cubic centimeters and milliliters, and those are related 
um, a little bit more closely than, than cubic meter and liter. But these are just ways that we can, can measure volume. Uh, length is measured in meters. We've used that already. We've used centimeters, or we've used perhaps millimeters. And temperature. Temperature is measured in the Celsius degree, sometimes called centigrade degree. Uh, we don't use Fahrenheit in science at all. Fahrenheit was developed to work with the weather. It's not really sufficient for most science work. So you're not going to find too many scientists around the world who, who think very highly of the Fahrenheit system. It's used for weather in this country, and that's about it. So the way that the SI system works is by using prefixes. And uh, the prefixes uh, are small words, portions of words, that have a meaning, a mathematical meaning. The meaning is uh, a multiplier. Um, these are the most common ones that you're going to need to know. Kilo, uh, which means a thousand times bigger than the base unit, uh, and, or a thousand would be represented by the multiplier 10 to the third power. Deci is a, a tenth of, one tenth of, uh, which is 10 to the minus one. Uh, centi is one one hundredth of the base unit, that's 10 to the minus two. Milli is one one thousandth, or 10 to the minus three of the base unit. A micro, now, micro, I want you to notice the symbol for micro. It's, it looks like a weird little U. It's actually the Greek letter mu. And it's because we've already used the lowercase m to represent milli, and an uppercase m means mega. So we use lowercase mu, which is the Greek letter, uh, to represent micro, which is 1 1 millionth of the base unit, or 10 to the minus 6th of the multiplier. And then nano is the very smallest. Uh, which is one one billionth of the base unit. There are other prefixes that are even smaller than that, pico and angstroms and so on, but these are the most common ones that we'll be using uh, in this class. And sometimes it's helpful, I think, to think of them in terms of a number line, uh, especially when you're first learning how to do conversions. The number line might be easy to, uh, to look at and to figure out, well, how many spaces am I going to be moving the decimal points when it's time to do conversions? So I've got this number line set up with just those units on there. The base unit is uh, right here, sort of in the middle, and that's multiplier is 10 to the 0, which is equal to 1. And so the, the base unit isn't multiplied by anything. It is itself. It is 1. And then everything else is by power of 10. So each space on this number line represents a power of 10. And that may become useful. Uh, when it's time to go ahead and do conversions, which is what we're, we'll learn how to do now. So the nice thing about everything being uh, based on a power of 10 is that if you want to make a conversion from one unit to another, you don't really have to do any math. You just have to move the decimal point. In, in our imperial units, if I tell you, you know, you have uh, 1,512 feet, how many miles is that? Well, it's not quite a mile, it's a fraction of a mile, and we have to figure out, well, what do I do? I have to divide by 5,280, and there's math involved. Now, that's no fun. So if I want to figure out, for example, how many centimeters there are in 1.25 meters, it's easy. It's just 125 centimeters. I just move the decimal point two places. Now we're going to practice some of these, but what you need to know to do this, to do it well, are two things. The first thing you need to know is which direction to move the decimal point as you're converting. And the direction that you move the decimal point in is dependent on whether or not you're going from a smaller measurement to a larger measurement or a larger measurement to a smaller measurement. If you're going from a large measurement to a small, move the decimal point to the right. Moving the decimal point to the right makes the number bigger, but that's what's going to happen. If you have like meters, which are very big, and you're going to centimeters, there's going to be a lot of centimeters in a smaller number of meters. The number is going to get bigger. So we move it to the right. If you're going the other way, small measurement to a large measurement, move the decimal point to the left. So that's the first thing you have to figure out. Which direction are you moving the decimal point? The second thing you have to figure out is how many spaces to move the decimal point. And that's based on the powers of 10 that we talked about. I find it useful to use the number line because you can just count spaces and the number of spaces is equal to the number of places to move the decimal point. Um, so let's try a few examples. I'll do a couple and then I'll have you try a couple and, uh, and see how you do. So let's take a look as an example. Let's convert uh, 2.75 kilometers uh, into centimeters. Okay, that's what we're going to do. 2.75 kilometers into centimeters. So we're going to ask ourselves the two questions. The first question is, uh, which direction do I need to move the decimal point? All right, and the way we're going to answer that is we're going to determine 
Am I going from a large to a small or small to large unit? I'm going from large, kilometer is bigger than centimeter, so large to small. Large to small means that I'm going to move my decimal point to the right. Okay, So I'm going to the right. That's the first question. Second question is how many spaces? Okay, So for this, I might need the number line. And I could use this number line just to sort of figure out how many spaces to move the decimal point. So if I'm going to go from kilometers down to centimeters, I've got three spaces between kilometers and the base unit, and another two spaces between the base unit and centimeters. So that's five spaces that I'm going to be moving the decimal point. Okay? So I now have my direction and my number of decimal places to move. So I start with the two, the seven, and the five, and the decimal point was right here between, it's going to move one, two, three, four, five spaces. I'm going to have to put in some placeholding zeros. Now these are not significant figures. These are placeholding zeros. So two, seven, five, zero, zero, zero centimeters. Or if you prefer, 2.75 times 10 to the fifth centimeters if you want to put it into scientific notation and retain the right number of sig figs. Okay? Now, what if I want to go the other way? So let's take uh, 4,210.7 micrometers, micro, that's the mu, and I want to convert that into uh, millimeters. Let me see, how many millimeters is that many micrometers? Okay? Again, which direction do we want to move them in? Well, we're going this time from small to large. And when I go from small to large, I have to go to the left. So small to large means that I'm moving the decimal point to the left. Second question is how many spaces? So again, I'm going to take a look at my number line. And I'm going to count from micro to the base unit. That's six spaces. But I'm not going all the way up to the base unit. I'm actually stopping three spaces early at millimeter. So there is a total of three spaces between micro and milli. And so that means I'm going to move my decimal point three spaces to the left. So right now, uh, it's I take the digits 4, 2, 1, 0, and the 7, and the decimal point was here. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3 spaces right up there. So 4.2107 millimeters is my answer to this one. Not too difficult. All right, now you're going to try one. I want you to tell me if you have 0 0.0035 meters, how many nanometers is that? Okay, so stop the video and try it out and then come back when you're done. All set? All right, well, let's see how you did. Did you ask yourself the questions? First questions, which direction do I have to move my decimal point in in order to do this conversion? All right, well, uh, I'm going from meters to nanometers. Meters is much larger than nanometers, so large to small is the direction that I'm going. Large to small means that I will go to the right. So I'm going to move my decimal point to the right. Now, second question is how many spaces? All right, so now I get my number line. And until you learn the relationships between these in your head, you use the number line. That's what it's for. So meter to nano is nine spaces. Nine spaces all the way out to nano. So I'm going to take my decimal point from where it is. Now it's right here between these two. This is where I'm starting. Okay, zero, zero, three, five. And I'm going to move it nine spaces to the right. So that's one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to need some zeros here. So my new answer is 3, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 3 million 500,000 nanometers. That's how small a nanometer is compared to a meter. We didn't even have close to one meter, and yet we still have over 3 million nanometers. Big number. So did you get it right? If so, you'll just practice some more. You'll get good at this. If not, don't worry. You can ask questions in class, and we'll get you there.